Hello and welcome to Brain Bites. This is a series where we learn about the new and exciting research coming out of the Center for Brain Health here at the University of British Columbia. We're going to dive deep into new findings and then talk to the scientists that are behind the research. Today we're meeting with PhD candidate Emily Button, and her work is in the field of pathology, so that's pretty much everything to do with diseases. And her research has shown that good cholesterol can actually be used to prevent Alzheimer's disease. So I'm here with Emily Button. Hi. Hello, <laughs> glad you could make it today. We yes. have this wonderful space out here. My god, I love the, the view that you guys yeah, have. Yeah, me too. It's inspirational. How long days. have you guys been at this lab? Uh, we've been in this lab for, I think, three and a half or so years, maybe a bit under three and a half years. That's yep. great. Yeah, yeah, really like it. So good cholesterol, yep. high density lipoproteins, yes. HDL. Yes. Uh, we know that that stuff is good for the circulatory system. We see that in a lot of ad campaigns. Yeah. Uh, so that would also be good then for the circulatory system of the brain. Yeah, that's basically was our research question was we know that HDL, high density lipoprotein, does all these great things on the cells in your arteries, in other parts of your body. It's right. good for your heart. So we wanted to see whether it does similar things in the brain arteries. And what have, what have you found? It seems like it does. So we, we studied it in two different ways. Um, one of the main ways we looked at it is we built these three-dimensional models of arteries that you find in your brain that are super cool. And then we can add HDL to the inside of the arteries as if it's in the blood. And we can add amyloid beta to the outside of the arteries like you would find in the brain. And we find that they interact in a way and that the HDL protects the vessels from the amyloid beta damage. That's really cool. Yeah. Let me, let me just try to understand. So amyloid beta is, that's what builds up when someone has Alzheimer's disease. Yep. And that that's creates one of, those, one of the proteins. One of the proteins. Okay. Yep. And that creates those like the holes or the, the abscesses. Yeah, it makes these clumps of protein and those can kill the brain cells and that's part of why your brain sort of shrinks when you have okay. Alzheimer's. And so how does HDL then come into that again? Right, so the amyloid beta also seems to be bad for the arteries in your brain. So one of the ways that the amyloid gets out of the brain so that it doesn't build up and make those plaques is it goes through the blood-brain barrier into the bloodstream and then we can get rid of it. But when it's going through these vessels, it can damage the arteries and make them have inflammation or that sort of thing. So what we found is that the HDL can prevent that inflammation that happens when the amyloid is going through the arteries. So as long as we can get amyloid beta out, then things are okay? Probably. As long as it gets out and um, is fully cleared out of the system, it seems like that is probably a good thing. Um, there's still a lot of mystery in Alzheimer's disease and what actually happens and how the disease progresses, but okay. that's definitely one of the theories is that Young, healthy people, our amyloid beta gets out of the brain really well, but sometimes in aging or in Alzheimer's, it gets sort of stuck there. Okay, sorry. So everyone has amyloid beta. Yes. It's not like people yeah. just with Alzheimer's yep. disease. It's I, always produced. I have it as well. Yeah, but yours is coming out of your brain nicely, is the, the theory at least. That's what we understand. Okay. So perhaps like maybe some of the blood vessels are constricted or they're not working to their fullest yep. capacity in the brain of someone with Alzheimer's and that's causing the buildup of amyloid beta. That could definitely be part of it. Yeah. So we're in the lab, we are suited up, and Emily, what are we doing in here? We are going to take a look at this three-dimensional model of arteries that you find in your brain. Okay, so Open what's it up. this? So this is an incubator. It is not a fridge. Not it actually fridge. keeps things warm at 37 right. degrees, like your body temperature, so that, that the sense. human cells can grow happy in it as if they're in your body. That makes sense. All right, let's open it up. Let's okay. see what we got in here. So what we have in here is actually a whole number of our different vessels. So each one of these tubes holds one artery model. And what they are is little mesh scaffolds that we then add our different human cell types of interest. And then they grow in this bioreactor system. So what we do for experiments is we can inject on the outside here things like amyloid beta that you find outside of the vessels in the brain. And then we can add things that you find in the blood, like HDL, to the bottles here. And then it circulates through this tubing that's hooked onto this pump you can see going around a little bit. 
and that circulates the HDL through the arteries like you would have it circulating through your arteries in your brain, in your real human body. This is kind of like a body almost. You have like the circulatory system, you have the, the blood vessels, and you yeah. even have a, a pump, which is yeah, kind of like exactly. the heart. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like the heart. And then we sort of have what we treat as a brain region. So within this compartment, outside of the vessels, what we treat as our brain, so the brain cell area surrounding your blood vessels. And that's where we can inject in things like amyloid beta that you find in the brain and see how that acts on the vessel within. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you for, uh, for showing me this. Thank this is you for an coming. an unbelievable piece of equipment. Yeah, it's really cool. We can do a lot of fun stuff with this it. Was Thank like, you. Was, it, was this useful in this in your study? Yeah, absolutely. It allowed us to really mechanistically look at how these different brain compounds and blood compounds interact to affect your vessels in a three-dimensional way, which is way better than just looking at cells flat in a dish. It's more like an actual human body that way. It's really cool. Thanks. Now, if I were to, if my mom was to ask okay. about your study, what would what would I tell her? What what would be a good you know, one to two sentences? You can get it right away. What, what would be something that I would say? I'd say that if your mom is concerned about her future brain health and her memory, she needs to be careful now about keeping her heart health happy. It really seems that especially at middle age is the time to make sure that you're exercising and eating well, all things that can help improve your HDL levels and HDL function, because that's really what seems to affect your risk of Alzheimer's and dementia later how you are in middle age. It, there really seems to be like a carryover then. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's, it's really important um, before you even start to get Alzheimer's because it's a decades long disease, right? Yeah. So by the time you're in your 70s or 80s, you might have memory problems, but the disease actually starts maybe more in your 50s or 60s. Really? So that is the time to be doing these lifestyle things that might help promote brain health later down the line before you actually have damage occurring. So what would be the take home message then? So I'd say the take home message is that HDL, this thing that helps keep your heart health um, good, it helps keep your heart happy, also seems to keep your brain happy. Okay, I like that. It's <laughs> a good tagline. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for showing us the wonderful model and for talking to us today about your lovely research. Thanks so much for coming. It was a lot of fun. Um, should definitely recognize that this isn't all just my work. We have a great team, especially recognizing Dr. Jerome Bear, who was a big part of both of these papers, lead author on one of them, one of the big builders of this three-dimensional model. And of course, the whole head of the lab, uh, my supervisor, Dr. Cheryl Wellington, who does lots to help us get this research going. Absolutely, and, and if someone wanted to read or learn more about your stuff, where, where could they go? Yeah, absolutely. There was two different papers actually published over the summer and early fall. The first one looking at HDL and its anti-inflammatory effects in the vessel, published in Molecular Neurodegeneration. And the second one was looking at HDL and its effect on preventing amyloid beta from accumulating in these vessels. And that was published in eLife. There will be links to Emily and her team's paper in the description. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter. And thank you.